when choosing a body for your mini C, there are some things that you need to take into account first. First account, what kind of car is underneath the body shell? Is it a box stock? Is it a super stock? Is it a modified? Is it a, yeah, is it a four wheel drive? It may not, you may not think that it matters, but it does. So for this video, we will be concentrating about two wheel drive cars mostly, and mostly towards the stock uh, proportion of things. Because if you went, if you go to modify to something, choose a Lexane body, it's it's by far better for racing. And, yeah, but for the for the stock classes where mostly it's mandated that it's a, a hard body shell, let's go with that. So. Things we need to understand first. For example, box stock, it's very important to have a very low drag coefficient. And what is a drag coefficient? It is, I'm gonna try to be very basic here because in my previous work, I did some, I did some engineering work for a very large airplane manufacturer. So I'm not trying to, I'm trying to, to unlearn some of the terminology so I'm going to be very basic here. So um, drag coefficient is how easy the body moves through the air, how much power it needs to move through the air. And one of the things that matters in that equation is how much frontal area do the car have? And frontal area is relatively easy to, you don't need to, uh, to calculate it for these, for these bodies. That, that, that's, you don't need to go in that kind of detail. But it is, if you put a grid up here in front of the car, and you will see how many square millimeters the, the body is. That is the frontal square, that is the, the area uh, for the car. And then the, the drag coefficient. The drag coefficient is a little bit more difficult, I'm not gonna go into that, but it's, it's, it's more based on, on the shape of the car and the surface roughness and, and things like that. It is an extremely large uh, subject, so we're not gonna go into that. I'm just gonna teach you things that you need to learn for choosing your body. So, most people will say that this guy, you'll need this to race stock. And yes, it is a very good body. Is it gonna be the fastest body that you can race in stock and super stock? No, it is absolutely not. This is, Purely, this is a, a can Jumarimo GTO one hard body. This is middle of the road. the The reason why people love this is that it's very wide, big wheel arches, and you can fit almost anything underneath this, like um, disc damper things and everything like that. It's a roomy body, uh, and in the roominess comes a lot of drag because the frontal area is quite large because it's quite wide. People will say, yeah, it's super low. You've got lower bodies than that. But this body, it has no aerodynamic benefits. It got no shapes, like it got a big spoiler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It got no shapes that will, that will go the either or the other way. It will not polarize your setup in either way. It is purely down the middle of the road. You don't know how to set up a body, uh, a car for the body. This is your choice. This is, and that's why a lot of people use these because setting up the car for the body or setting up the body for the car is a, it's a task and it's a task you know how to do if you're uh, quite, uh, well wandered in setup and how to look at cars driving but middle of the road you don't want excess steering you don't want excess rotation you don't want excess grip on any point of the car this will be the one because when you're talking about bodies I'm just gonna move some of them out of the way you will talk about the overhang an overhang is front overhang and rear overhang and it stems from the center of the axle to how much mass is from the center of the axle to either the front or the end. 
so front overhang here and on this it is a very long a very low uh, uh, overhang uh, amount so this car will be um, on the easier maneuverable side of the spectrum and it won't have that much um, rear overhang so it won't have a lot of um, a rear rotation in the in the corners sorry I'm doing this in one take and I'm having some issues as well <laughs> um, and so you will have a reactive car but it's di it's dimmed down of the whiteness and to some degree also that it's so smooth in the front so you have nothing to generate any kind of air stack I'm gonna do a more advanced video on uh, aerodynamics about air stacks and, and things like that not in this one but this is so smooth that it, it will it will be a non polarizing body this is you want to race stock and you don't want to get caught in the in the in the barriers and you want to just skid off uh, opponents when you run into them it will be a very good body um, other bodies uh, this was a, a quite low slung body in uh, in the terms of the uh, of the center of gravity it's it's quite low on this car and it's, it's good to have a low center of gravity because uh, it will uh, minimize the roll that the car has and with roll comes um, latency so latency is you waiting for the car to finish this roll before you can go on the gas or input steering again so you want that you want to minimize that um, a even more long sl low slung body is uh, the Ferrari notice there's no wing on this um, because in for example box dog you don't really need a wing I know it's for some people super controversial to say they don't need a wing on this this is does absolutely not it doesn't really need it in real life unless it's a GT concept which which was never really fulfilled uh, but this doesn't need in in real life it it relies greatly on mechanical grip um, and this is one of my favorite uh, box dog racing cars mostly because of the massive overhang in the front you see it got a massive overhang so the reason why I like this car is because in box dog for example I rely on keeping momentum so when you rely on keeping momentum that will dictate that you do not turn the front wheels as much as uh, yeah that you don't turn uh, the front wheel as much because they scrub off speed so if you use this you will have a very reactive front end and you will use a lot of steering this, this doesn't roll as good in the, in the corners as this does so this will keep up momentum really really nicely because you need you can you can have a more stable car when you have more for a more front overhang and more cap forward cars they will generally be more stable in the the whole of the car actually and you will be able to keep momentum more because you don't need to correct a lot with this it also it's not as quick to change directions and things like that but you don't really need that in box dog um so yeah that's why i use this this would not be that great in like a 2d modified and there's a lot of other reasons for that but let's take that in another video so yeah very middle of the road by far uh, by any means not the fastest body uh, lap for lap uh, that would probably be something like this the the mclaren got a lot of things going for it it's light it's very low slung i think it's is it like only one millimeter taller than it doesn't look like that when you look from it like from the side because this looks all oh, the still really narrow windows but this got a huge side uh, door panel here so this car also got a lot of room for uh, for wheels for different offsets as this does because this is I think this is what makes this a lot a very popular body and also this doesn't doesn't stick on the on the rails but this got a lot of things going for it. it got side skirts in the front uh, the canards doesn't do anything um, it's for air stack so you will have a more um, reactive front even though it's a little bit longer than the GTO one 
Um, and the the body is perfectly capable without the wing. This not as much, but the reason why this is very good even without a wing is understanding um, aerodynamics is understanding what uh, what high and low pressure is. So a fast moving air is a lower pressure and a slow moving air is a higher pressure and higher pressure is downforce. So when you have a, a fast back style body like this is where the roof line goes and almost ends all the way at the back here then you have a thing called uh, the Coanda effect. The Coanda effect is the air will stick to your body and follow the curvature. But normally that would, if it just ended in a fastback going all the way around here, you would generate um, a low pressure zone in the back, which would actually lift the, the rear end. But then the McLaren, like in the real deal, they have a little tiny duck spoiler here, like a, a duck tail spoiler here. It's not big, but it's enough to interrupt the air going from the Coanda effect and going on the body here. So it would actually generate a little bit of downforce down here. Just enough for a box stock to actually keep, uh, keep its grip in the back. And in another video, I will be going through uh, how to make a box stock body more uh, uh, drag coefficient, like have less drag and where you need to remove parts and something like that. But for this, this is only a video telling you if you drag it like this, choose a body like that. So if you are a bit of an uh, aggressive driver, I would choose this. This this would make your car a little bit easier to drive. And it's also really fast on the straights. Um, don't use this. This has an insane amount of overhang in the front. That would usually be good, but it counteracts it by having a huge overhang in the back as well. So this body is like, um, if you're holding an end of a broomstick and moving a broomstick around, this would be driving this body. It's not very precise. It's slow. Uh, but it's at, well, it, it does act, actually uh, create some stability, but this is not for, this is not for racing mini C's. It is way too long and yeah, you don't want to go there. Quite good buddies. The Mosler. I think it's quite overlooked um, compared to this. They have um, roughly the same overhang, but the Mosler has a lot, a lot steeper front end. So it, this will generate more um, grip on the front tires. Also, it got more cap forward, so it's also more stable. It, unlike the um, the Jumarino, this got just the wheel latches going down, and nothing to help airflow, uh, direct airflow to the rear. The only thing that's directing airflow to the rear is the roof, and the roof is not doing a very great job of that. That's also why the Maslow, which is a, a, a real race car, a real race car, has these flat sides next to the cockpit, like almost every single Le Mans or Le Mans or um, LMP2 class series you see. It's for directing airflow to the rear, to the to the wing in the rear, and the wing in the rear will generate some um, some downforce to the rear tires. This that that is also one of the reasons why this standard spoiler that comes with the GT01 is so huge. This. I will uh, hand on heart say that this little spoiler, I, I made some modifications to this one, the standard spoiler will almost generate the same amount of downforce as this big guy because they have, as in the real race car, every single part of this is directing air to, to the back, unlike this. So this, I wouldn't say it's for, uh, for box stock because it's a bit heavier body than the uh, McLaren. The McLaren is super light. So this this body here, um, modified, two-wheel drive. 
I drive it even at uh, with the four-wheel drive. Um, it's great. It's good maneuverability, good rotation. So I think this is overlooked compared to this. This isn't that much uh, heavier than the Jumarima. I think it's two grams heavier this than this. So that was a little bit of a rambling and there will be a more instructed video. I, I do these in one take, so it's mostly about just rambling. <laughs> so I will do more if it's if you like it then in the comments please state that you want uh, some more in-depth video about aerodynamics for example and i will do it until then see you next time